Intra-aortic counterpulsation. The goals of intra-aortic balloon pumps are to increase myocardial oxygen supply but decrease the oxygen demand. We also want to improve cardiac output, ejection fraction, and increase coronary perfusion pressure, which is CPP. Systemic perfusion and a decrease of heart rate, pulmonary capillary web pressure, and SVR is something else that the balloon pump also does. The balloon is guided all the way up to the descending aorta, approximately two centimeters from the left subclavian. So at the start of diastole, the balloon will inflate, and then you'll have augmenting coronary perfusion. At the beginning of each systole, the balloon will deflate, and then the balloon is ejected from the left ventricle. Therefore, you have increasing cardiac output as much as a 40% increase, and you'll have decrease in left ventricular stroke volume and myocardial oxygen demand requirements. This is how the balloon supports the heart indirectly. Counterpulsation timing is usually measured by a 1 to 1, 1 to 2, or 1 to 3 ratio. For patient management, there's a few things that you want to keep your eye out on. Some of the complications that can arrive from counterpulsation are aortic dissection. Uh, you can have augmentation issues where there's timing. Uh, some of the timing complications could be early inflation, late inflation of the balloon, early deflation, or late deflation as well. Some other complications include bleeding at the insertion site. You can have a balloon rupture. There can be dysrhythmias that are associated with um, counterpulsation. Failure for the pump to pump. Um, at limb ischemia can be... Um, Limb ischemia can happen as well from positioning issues and also cardiac arrest. When a patient goes into cardiac arrest while being assisted with a balloon pump, switch to the pressure triggering mode once the pump alarms go off due to the loss of EKG rhythm. Remember to select assist after changing the trigger modes. So to reduce the pressure threshold if the balloon fails to pump from pressure trigger. The balloon does not need to be disconnected during defibrillation. If CPR cannot generate a consistent and reliable trigger, then switch to the internal mode, which will maintain movement of the balloon pump, therefore reduce the risk of a thrombus formation. Some quick takeaways for the balloon pump is to remember that the goal of putting patients on the balloon pump is to increase myocardial oxygen supply but decrease the demand. Um, you're also going to have decreased urine output after insertion because the juxtal renal balloon positioning initially. Um, hemolysis from mechanical damage of the blood cells can reduce your hematocrit up to essentially 5%. Suboptimal timing of the inflation and deflation of the balloon produces hemodynamic instability. The balloon pump is thrombogenic, so always make sure that the patient is anticoagulated and never switch the balloon pump off.